Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I want to talk to you about why the Steam Deck sucks, or at least why it sucks for me, and that's because this device gives me more chances to play more games around different places in my house, which has led to my wife complaining at me a lot more, and my marriage being more uncomfortable. But let me tell you, my gaming experience is a lot better, and now have the flexibility to play a variety of games in all sorts of places, not just at my desk, and in my gaming PC, but also in various different places around my house. Now I can finally lounge on the sofa and play all the games that I don't have enough time to play otherwise and enjoy some of those experiences. But obviously I'm getting it in the neck regularly, so I then have to battle with those problems. But if you're interested in playing games in a more free way, then the Steam Deck is obviously a great option to use. Now I was curious about what this experience would be like, obviously coming from a pretty high-end gaming PC. I was concerned that moving to a handheld console of a gaming PC would be a lesser experience and a frustrating one, but I was actually surprised by just how good it has been and how successful the experience has been as well. Now this is obviously a battery powered device and I've had a lot of experience with gaming laptops over the last few years. And my general experience has been that if you're not using a gaming laptop plugged in, then the graphical power of it isn't as good, the FPS isn't as good, and the experience isn't as smooth. But what I've found with the Steam Deck is that you can play untethered, on battery, quite comfortably, without much issue. And it runs really smooth and really well. Now, I've played a number of different games, and I'll link to a video in the description where I did a stream using this uh, for a couple of hours twice on my gameplay channel where I show off various different games that I've played but I've tested out all sorts of different games. You can see me playing No Man's Sky here but I've played a little bit of Forza Horizon 5, uh, Dirt Rally and other games on it too and it's been a great experience all over. Obviously a little bit less power but a lot of other things of interest. Now I want to talk to you about that as we go through. I'm also going to unbox the Steam Deck now and just show you what's included in the box. You've probably seen this already if you're interested in the Steam Deck. Now this was the Q2 batch. I was unlucky and that I wasn't fast enough to pull the trigger on this so I had to wait quite a while. I've had it for a bit now and I haven't had a chance to do a video on it yet but I wanted to talk to you about my experiences and what it's been like. Now I bought this thing because I wanted to be able to play games that I don't have enough time to play on my main machine and to be able to do that in a free way, getting into Kingdom Come Deliverance for example is something I'd like to spend more time on, I really love that game but I haven't put enough hours into it and No Man's Sky that you could see me playing there. Now I wanted to be able to play those games and enjoy them in more places and with more freedom. I also was curious about how many games would run. Now one of the things of interest is that you can find out before you purchase the Steam Deck just how many of your games are verified as playable. I've got about 900 games in my library and at the time first purchasing it and getting it out of the box as you can see me doing now I found about 90 something games were verified or marked as playable. That least has actually increased since I got this original footage and now I'm over 100 games where well, there's still only a small portion of the games that are available to play. Now inside the box you do get a nice carrying case and it's a good solid case and this obviously protects the Steam Deck when you're carrying it around the house or taking it out with you and it's a nice addition to have that you don't have to pay extra for this. Now I bought the 256 gigabyte model of the Steam Deck. It obviously comes in three different sizes with ever so slightly different specs. It's also worth noting that news has come out recently that they've changed the internal storage on the newer Steam Deck, so now it actually comes with slightly slower NVMe SSDs inside, so that's worth keeping in mind. Although my experience is actually, I wish I'd gone for the 512 gigabyte one, and that's because I found that I filled up this Steam Deck with relative speed just a few games, I think I had about four or five games on there and it was full. Obviously that's going to vary depending on the games you're installing, but with modern game sizes it's ridiculously easy to fill up. Now when I got it out of the box I was really impressed with the overall build quality of the thing. It feels nice in the hand, as you can see those back sort of trigger areas and grips stick out nicely has a good solid build quality to it, it feels fantastic in the hand and it sits really nice, it's really easy to play for ages and that's one of the things that I found is that you can play for quite some time as well. Again this is going to vary, my experience has been that you can get two or three hours out of it before it needs plugging and charging. Now the charging 
port is on the top. You can see that's a USB-C port, and obviously it comes with a plug in order to do that, and it seems to have some fairly fast charging capabilities, so it's pretty good. One of the things that I did note, though, was this cable was pretty short, so it doesn't go very far, so it would be frustrating if you were trying to plug this in and game, but you were quite a distance from a wall socket obviously that'll be a bit of annoyance it boots up with relative speed but one of the things that i'll show you later on is the games themselves take a while to load the other thing that i'd highly recommend is buying yourself a micro sd card a nice large one if you've gone for the 256 gig model like i have or the smaller one you'll definitely want an sd card in there that obviously means that the games are a little bit slower to load but it does mean that you can put more games on it now one of the joys of the steam deck though is that you can use your gaming PC to stream to it, but I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. Now you can see when you first turn it on and log in, you get the various different sort of talk throughs on what the buttons do and what they go through. And here you can see there's a power button on top, you can put it into sleep mode, you can turn it off, you can restart it there as well. The button on the left takes you into the Steam menu, the one on the right takes you into the various different options. And there are all sorts of options, and they keep adding to it as well, and that's one of the things that I really liked about this. When I first got the Steam Deck, I found that my main complaint about it was the fan noise was really loud. So when you were playing quite intense games, the fan noise was quite obnoxious. There was a lot of white noise coming out of it, and that resulted in a bit of a problem. I just wasn't really enjoying that sound. You do get that with thin and light gaming laptops as well. I've had that experience with those. But one of the things that Valve's done is they've actually released updates for this and they keep pushing updates for it that make it better. And one of those updates is now changed so that the operating system can handle the fan speed more effectively and also to manage it on the fly to adjust to the right circumstances. So what I found is this means that the fan noise isn't as obnoxious if you're doing less intensive things, so it's not constantly ramping up and it's a much more pleasant experience. Obviously there's also a 3.5mm connection on top, so you can plug in a 3.5mm headset and there are a variety of other options that you can plug in and connect up things. So you could connect up Bluetooth devices for it, for example. I haven't done that, to be honest, because I prefer to just play on the speakers and on the device itself. But it is possible to connect controllers and other things as well. And it goes through all the different controls and talks to you about the verified and non-verified games. Now, non-verified games and unsupported games are potentially problematic. When I first set up the Steam Deck, one of the games that I wanted to play was Medieval Dinner. And one of the things that you'll note is that this says it's actually not supported. At the time of purchasing the Steam Deck and trying to install that game, which was another one I wanted to play, just a sort of casual survival sim game, it said it was unsupported and wouldn't work. And if I went through my library, there were numerous different games that were marked as unsupported. What I've actually found is Medieval Dynasty is now supported, and I actually found that I could play it even though it was marked as unsupported. The other thing I found is that some games are marked as unplayable or, or unsupported and you can play them but they're a bit tricky and you do have to go through and sort of customise some of the buttons on the controls so you have to assign in-game controls to specific buttons on the Steam Deck. This is something that is a little bit fiddly and not that user friendly but a game like Ready or Not for example which is an FPS co-op shooter that required a little bit more programming in order to get working nicely. However, there are some that are marked as playable, and that was fairly straightforward in order to be able to play those. You can see Breath Edge, for example, is one of those, and also you have other games that are just fully verified, where they completely work, and they just basically plug and play. So you install it, you download it, and then you just play it. It's no problem at all, and all the controls are as they should be, nice and logical. Obviously, you've got control sticks on both sides, directional pad, the usual sort of A, B, X, Y layout in terms of the buttons. You also have two little track pads below either of the joysticks as well. So you have plenty of different controls there. Below the Steam button, on either side of the screen, you have the speakers. So you have speakers there, and on top of it, you've got the vent grill, the 3.5mm, and the volume control and power buttons. So that's where all the air gets blown out the top, and you'll find that you're sucking air from the underside and then blowing it out the top, and that's where you'll hear some of the noise. But the front firing speakers mean that if you crank that up, you can actually soak in the sound from the game and then get a pretty good experience out of it. And if you find that you're not getting the best experience, just plug a 3.5mm headset into it. So you've got a lot of flexibility here as you'll see it's quite a chunky thing and i put it up against my kids switch because i wanted to 
see what the sort of size difference is. And you might have seen comparison photos of this, but it's actually quite a bit bigger. So I've just been calling it the adult switch in my house because it gives me access to a lot more things. Now, one of the other highlights to this is obviously it doesn't have the processing power of a proper gaming PC. But what you can do is you can stream from your gaming PC. So you can choose to stream games from Steam running on your gaming PC and then beam them over your home Wi-Fi to the Steam Deck. This gives you the option to obviously not have to worry about storage internally and storing games on your PC, but also to stream games and use the power of processing power of your PC to therefore free up some of the power of the Steam Deck. One of the things obviously is that your FPS count won't be as high. You can't turn the graphics on as high if you're running straight off the Steam Deck because obviously internally the, the graphics power of this machine isn't as powerful as a dedicated desktop GPU but it does mean that you can then free up that power and use your processing power on your gaming PC. What I'm saying is you can get a much faster, better experience, smoother, assuming that you have a fast home Wi-Fi network, of course, and that your PC is running well, that you can then stream the games directly to it. So this gives you a lot of flexibility in what you can do, but actually the experience just playing games directly installed on the Steam Deck, I was really impressed with it. This video doesn't do it justice, I don't think. Ignore the sort of weirdities in the screen that's just trying to capture the screen on camera. Actually looks really crisp. It's got a great looking screen, nice and bright, really good colors, really good color representation. As I said, the sound's fantastic. I found the controls to be great. I really have very few complaints about this. I joked at the beginning about my wife nagging at me. That is really one of my main complaints. The other one was the fan noise just how much noise that gives off but that has been tackled and handled since then obviously battery life will vary for some if you're playing the more intense games you can see me playing god of war here for example and also if you've got the settings set so that you have high fps because you can adjust not only the refresh rate but the fps in the performance settings and obviously if you have things like the brightness turned all the way up and the volume turned all the way up, that's gonna eat into your battery life. On the other hand, if you're playing more indie games, a bit less intensive than the high-end AAA games, then you'll find that the battery will last longer. And obviously you can plug in and play anyway, or you can just leave it alone, give it a rest, plug it into charge, and then come back to it. And as I said, it seems to charge up pretty quickly as well, so it's not a problem. But for me, just sort of casually playing around my house, whenever the mood takes or I have some spare time where I'm not parenting or creating videos or working, then it has a great flexibility to be able to do that. And the experience has been really great. So overall, a fantastic device I'd highly recommend purchasing. Just don't cheap out and go for the small storage option or make sure you purchase a large micro SD card. You'll soon find you're filling it up and then you'll be frustrated with that. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Be sure to check out the links in the description to the stream if you want to see more gameplay. Thanks for watching.